Good morning, Mr. Miller. I was wondering if I could have a sick leave today. I apologize for the short notice, but I'm currently experiencing a high fever of 103 degrees Fahrenheit. I have tried to get out of bed, but I am too weak and dizzy. I seriously don't want to come to work and risk spreading my illness to others. I've already contacted my doctor and they've advised me to stay at home and rest. Hazel, I'm concerned that you're not taking the upcoming meeting with our key business partners seriously. This is a critical meeting and your absence would be a major setback. Yes, I'm very well aware of that, Mr. Miller, but my body just simply refuses to do as I want. No but, you and Mr. Jones from our parent company, Evergreen Corp, will be discussing a new project that involves building a million dollar hospital for the elderly. This project will be a significant contribution to our company's reputation on the market and I believe your presence is essential to its success. Therefore, I will not allow you to be absent from your work today. Mr. Miller, I understand that you are concerned about my upcoming meeting with Mr. Jones, but I am afraid that I am not physically able to attend. I am completely exhausted and I cannot even lift my fingers. I'm worried that if I force myself to go to work, I will only make myself worse and I will not be able to contribute to the meeting effectively. On that account, I truly need a sick leave for today so I can rest and recover. Look, I don't care what your excuses are. You know very well that you're having an important meeting today, aren't you? I informed you about it two weeks in advance. So why don't you be a little less selfish and show up at work today for the sake of our company? If you want to ask for a day off, at least tell me one week earlier. You've been working for this company for at least five years, yet you still haven't got a good grasp of the company's rules and regulations. Mr. Miller, I know the company's rules like the back of my hand, but how can I predict when I'm about to be sick? That's impossible. So can you please somehow find another person to replace me for the meeting today? Caleb, maybe? Caleb, what are you talking about? He's enjoying a one week vacation with his family. Why would I want to disturb him? He has worked tirelessly and has made significant contributions to our company's success. He deserves to have some days off as a reward for his hard work. What? You agree to let him have one week off, but you don't even allow me to be absent for work for just one day? What kind of treatment is that? Is this the kind of attitude that you should adopt when talking to your boss? I apologize for my earlier outburst, Mr. Miller. I didn't mean it. I just feel like I'm being treated a little unfairly compared to Caleb as we both work as project coordinators, that's all. Honestly, I've been devoting my time and effort to the company just as much as Caleb has. I think it's not too much to ask for a day off from work once in a while. I know it's on short notice but being sick is something that's difficult to control. Oh, you think that's unfair. Well, welcome to the real world where nothing is fair. You have a responsibility to your job and you can't just simply shirk that responsibility by suddenly saying that you're sick. You know, if you feel like you're not up for the task, you could always just quit. No one is forcing you to stay. It's funny how you didn't complain about your salary when you were coasting along, but now that you're actually expected to do some work, you're suddenly complaining? Mr. Miller, you're misunderstanding my point. I love this job and it also provides me with good wages. I'm not trying to complain or say that I'm not up to the job's expectations. I'm just simply asking for a day off because I'm literally not good enough to work today. Fine, you want a sick leave for today? You can have it. But remember to submit your request for sick leave tomorrow when you come to the office along with your resignation letter. If you don't, I'll compose a termination letter and send it to you personally. Mr. Miller, are you threatening to give me the sack just because I'm requesting a day off? I'm curious as to why you're treating me in this manner. I'm certain you're aware that your actions are in violation of employment law. Well, I'm not threatening anyone. As your employer, I can say that you don't have any respect for your superior and you don't fulfill the requirements of this job. If we fail to enter into a contract with Evergreen Corp today because of your recklessness, it would make more than enough reason for you to be dismissed. The choice is all yours. I'm not forcing you to do anything. Please, Mr. Miller, there must be another way to carry out the meeting without me having to show up. Can you please take the call, Mr. Miller? You've done a great job yesterday, Hazel. You got us another big contract. Your convincing skills have been instrumental in helping us win one contract after another. I must give you credit for that. Great, I'm glad everything worked out in the end. But I almost fainted after the meeting was over because the fever went really bad. Luckily, Mr. Jones figured that out and he took me to the hospital in time. I hope that you realize it could be a life-threatening situation, Mr. Miller. 
Oh, come on. Don't be such a drama queen. The fact is, you're still well and alive, aren't you? If not, you wouldn't be able to stand up, let alone sulk at me like this. Consider it a valuable lesson for your amateurism at work. You're all grown up. Stop being childish and unreasonable and then expect someone to clean after your mess. Please, Mr. Miller, don't get me wrong. I was just defending the legal rights that an employee deserves to have, and I still think that I did deserve to have a day off yesterday due to my high fever. I'm not trying to flatter myself, but I'm even worthy of receiving a bonus for having managed to go to work yesterday despite my sickness. So now you're demanding extra money for fulfilling the job duty that you already get paid for? How entitled of you. You should consider yourself lucky that I didn't dock your pay for today's penalty time. It took you nearly four hours to complete a task that should have been done in two hours. If I were feeling less merciful, I would have deducted two hours worth from your salary. But Mr. Miller, please be mindful of the fact that I ran a fever of almost 103 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday. Nevertheless, you still insisted on me showing up at the workplace today. I mean, I didn't even have time to fully recover from my illness. Oh please, you're being overdramatic again. Yesterday, you were rushed to the hospital right after the meeting, which means that you had practically the entire daytime yesterday to regain your strength from your meager episode of the vapors. What more do you want, actually? I'm sorry, Mr. Miller, but I don't even have to be a doctor to tell that a 103 degree Fahrenheit fever is a high-grade fever. In fact, I was at my physical limit and I was about to collapse. I'm wondering if there's a way to improve the way I'm being treated, Mr. Miller especially compared to the benefits that Caleb is receiving. Well, if you're feeling like you're being treated unfairly, I suppose you could always leave. We don't need people who are always complaining. On the other hand, if you would like to stay, I expect to see your face at work tomorrow. But, Mr. Miller... Another thing, I need you to also take on Caleb's workload while he is enjoying his vacation. He won't be able to get his work done on time, so it's important that we pick up the slack. However, please don't use this as an excuse to delay your own deadlines. We need to make sure that everything gets done on time. I beg your pardon, Mr. Miller, but there's no way I'm going to accept covering Caleb's responsibilities on his behalf because I've learned my lesson from last time. I won't let myself be taken advantage of anymore. I'm going to stand up for myself and my boundaries. Hazel, what are you even talking about? Are you implying that I'm taking advantage of you? Me? You were fully cognizant that your previous statement was a deliberate assault against my person, yet you persisted in making it. Is that the way an employee should be talking with their boss? I don't think so. I think an employee should be respectful and professional even when they disagree with their boss. I'm not saying that I'm not willing to help Caleb again, but I'm not sure if it's worth my time. The last time I helped him, I didn't gain anything from it. In fact, I think it actually hurt my own productivity. And to make matters worse, Caleb even got recognition, praise, and a bonus for what was supposed to be my effort and contribution. Oh, Hazel, I've always seen you as a lazy, complainy employee, but now I'm finding out that you're also incredibly selfish. Well, that's just great. Honestly, why don't you just set aside your selfishness for once and do what I say for the good of the company, huh? Mr. Miller, it's simply not true what you just said. It's not like you're doing anything productive anyway. You're just sitting around complaining about how hard you have it. Well, guess what? Life is hard and if you want to get ahead, you need to be willing to put in the work. So stop being so selfish and start thinking about the company. If you don't, you're going to find yourself out on your ear. Mr. Miller, I seriously don't have any clue what you're talking about. I don't claim myself the most hardworking employee in the company, but I'm proud of my achievements and the contributions I've made to the company's growth. That's why I think it's totally not true when you say that I'm just sitting around and not doing anything productive. Look, I'm not gonna waste my time arguing back and forth with you. If you're feeling dissatisfied, please pack your things and leave the office by tomorrow. I'd be more than glad not to see you around anymore. To be honest, you're just a blip on the radar and your contributions are negligible. Do you really think that the company will be unable to function without you? But Mr. Miller, please have sympathy for my family's circumstances. Stances. I'm a single mother of two children. I truly need this job to support my family. I have been with the company for half a decade, and I have worked hard to build my career here. If I quit this job, I'll have to start my career over from scratch, take a low-paying job, and I won't be able to provide for my family anymore. Does any of what you just said have anything to do with me? Don't delude yourself that you're the only person in the world who has a family to support and needs money to get by. Wake up and face reality. Everyone else is dealing with the same issues as you're having right now, so your excuses mean nothing to me. Mr. Miller, I am simply asking for fairness. I'm not asking for special treatment, but I am asking for the same treatment that everyone else receives. I believe that this is a fair request, and I hope that you'll consider it. 
Fine, fine, whatever you say. I sometimes find myself wondering who is the superior here, you or me? <laughs> Hazel, are you there? There's something I need to talk to you about. It's urgent. Yes? What is it, Mr. Miller? I'm happy to help you in any way possible. By the way, Mr. Miller, I wanted to take a moment to thank you for taking my words into consideration and giving me more respect for my rights recently. I appreciate your willingness to listen to my concerns and to make changes that have made my work life more enjoyable. Listen, Hazel, I know it's Sunday and you're not supposed to work today. Nevertheless, I have a small request and I expect you to say yes to it. Um, okay, Mr. Miller, tell me. My mom is not feeling well and I need your help. I'm going on a relaxing trip to Switzerland with my family today, but I can't leave my mom alone at the hospital. Could you please rush to the hospital and help me watch over her? We've planned and paid everything for this trip, so we can't just cancel it. Well, I suppose, but why don't you just hire a caretaker? Come on, it's not like my mom is gonna stay at the hospital forever. She'll be staying there only for one month, so I don't think it's necessary to hire a caretaker for that. Besides, it also costs a lot of money, and I'm not gonna pay that amount. I know that hiring a private caretaker can be expensive, but I think it would be the best way to ensure your mom gets the care she needs. Besides, I'd appreciate it if you inform me a few days earlier so I have more time to prepare myself. No, I've already made up my mind. In fact, why should I waste my hard-earned money for some stupid stupid caretakers when I already have you, my excellent employee. So what do you say? If you agree, please go to Golden Years Hospital, room 305. Just provide the hospital staff with my mom's name and date of birth and they'll show you how to get to my mom's room. But Mr. Miller, I also need to make time for my personal life. I've been working hard all week and I even have to work on a side job on Saturdays. Sunday is the only day that I have to relax and spend time with my friends and family. Tell me, what is more important than taking care of a vulnerable elder? Elderly woman like my mom. I presume that you also have a mother, correct? You should be able to understand this better than anyone else. Anyways, I'm not asking you to do it. I'm telling you to. Consider it a way to repay me for the kindness I've shown you at work lately. Wait, you said that your mom's gonna be at the hospital for a whole month? But I also have to work and take care of my family, you know? So how will I find time to handle all of my responsibilities, given that I have to work and take care of my family? And now your mom needs care as well? Can you please find someone else to attend to your mom? I don't care how you do it, just get it done. Keep in mind that taking care of my mom and accomplishing your work are now your top priorities. I may not be at the office, but Caleb is keeping an eye on you. So don't even think that you can slack off by doing me a little favor. Mr. Miller, I think what you're asking of me is a little unreasonable. I I've told you this a million times, but you still force me to repeat myself for you. Don't interrupt me when I'm not finished talking. Anyways, I also expect you to clean my house once in a while. Caleb is having my house key so you can come to him and ask for it. Another thing, if you have the slightest intention of stealing anything from me, forget about it. I have 24-7 surveillance cameras installed in every corner of my house, so you're not going to get away with anything. Hazel, you did a really good job at taking care of both my mom and my house while I was gone. My mom was so impressed with your care that she even mistook you for a professional caregiver. Can you believe it? <laughs> Happy to hear you're pleased with what I did. It's the result of me running back and forth between the hospital and your house every day after work to take care of both your mom and your household chores. Honestly, I didn't have enough time to sleep. I can see that my house has been carefully swept and cleaned as well. The floors and countertops are spotless and the furniture looks polished. Well done. I might even consider hiring you as my family's housekeeper, but only if you're willing to work for free. <laughs> Just kidding, or am I? <laughs> nice joke. Oh, I forgot to ask, how's work? Is everything good? Did you fulfill all of the tasks that I assigned you before I went on my vacation? I figured you did, because I didn't receive any texts from Caleb. You bet I did. To think about it, it feels kind of strange, because not once during my entire trip did anyone from the company text or call me about work. Well, I must have been lucky. You know what, Hazel? That that was the most satisfying and relaxing vacation I've ever had for a very long time. I'm feeling so refreshed and I can't wait to get back to work tomorrow morning. Well, about that, Mr. Miller, I have something I want to tell you. What is it that's so difficult to tell? Wait, you and other people at the company are gonna throw me a surprise party tomorrow? Like you did last time? Well, I really appreciate you guys' thoughts, but you don't have to do it for me. Seriously, I'm just happy to be back at work and I'd rather just keep things low-key. It's not about that, Mr. Miller. Honestly, I don't know how to put it, but your employment with the company is being terminated, Mr. Miller. 
What, what are you saying? You mean that I'm being fired? That's not even possible. I haven't done anything out of line to get myself in trouble. Wait, did you badmouth me to Mr. Jones? That's the only thing I can think of. You're the only one petty enough to do something like that. I knew I couldn't trust people like you. You're all just a bunch of backstabbers. Well, you're half right. I did talk to Mr. Jones about you, but I didn't mean to get you fired. I just told him the truth and nothing but the truth. What truth? You're getting on my nerves. Tell me now. Firstly, don't get me wrong, but I didn't intentionally meet Mr. Jones in person. We accidentally bumped into each other when I was taking care of your mom in the hospital. It turns out that Mr. Jones's mother had fallen ill, so he was spending all his time taking care of her. I must admit, the way he took care of her was truly heartwarming. He was so attentive and loving, and it was clear that he cared deeply for her. I'm sure any mother would be lucky to have a son like him. Hey, can you please cut to the chase? I don't have the time or patience for this nonsense. What did you say about me to Mr. Jones behind my back? Well, as I said, nothing but the truth. I told him that you forced me to go to work when I had a high fever, assigned me all of the work that was meant for your favorite employee, Caleb, and even made me take care of your mother in the hospital. You don't know how shocked Mr. Jones was when he learned that the person I was caring for wasn't my own mother, but it was your mother. How dare you badmouth me like that, you witch. You're gonna pay for what you did to me. To be honest, I didn't want to rat you out, but Mr. Jones insisted on knowing what was going on and what other things you had done to me. I had no choice but to tell him everything. Mr. Jones was so angry at the way you treated me that he decided you were no longer fit to be the director of our company. So that's basically the whole story. No, this can't be happening. You do realize that you just ruined my career and my life, Hazel. You have to take responsibility for what you did. Come and talk to Mr. Jones again. Say that it was just a little misunderstanding between the two of us, that you made up all those lies just to take me down. You know what, Mr. Miller? Or should I call you by your first name? Ryan, right? I did feel sorry for you, and I also thought of helping you clear my name. But alternatively, why should I ever do that? I was simply stating the facts, so I have no reason to feel guilty. You, on the other hand, took advantage of my kindness and made me do all kinds of irrelevant tasks for you without even so much as a thank you. You little... I mean... Hazel, my beloved employee, can you please take a moment to calm down and then ask Mr. Jones to reconsider his decision? You already know that my job means everything to me and my family. I told you the same thing last time, Ryan. And what did I get for it from you? A dressing down. Well, this time, you're on your own. I'm not going to keep bailing you out of your messes. Eventually, Mr. Miller, my toxic boss, was fired. I felt a twinge of sympathy for him, but I was also relieved to be free from his reign of terror. Ryan tried to contact me numerous times after he was fired, but I didn't respond to any of his calls or text messages. After all, I didn't make the decision to fire him. Mr. Jones did. Mr. Jones even promoted me to be the developer for the Elderly Hospital Project after being impressed by my skills in taking care of the elderly and my work ethic. That wasn't the only good news for me. Mr. Jones was also appointed as the new director of the company, replacing my old boss, Ryan. I was thrilled with these developments. I knew that I could contribute to the company's success under Mr. Jones's leadership. I was also grateful to him for believing in me and giving me these opportunities. The world of employment can be a scary place, and dealing with a toxic boss is definitely something I would rather forget. However, it has also taught me valuable lessons, such as knowing my worth, speaking up for myself, fighting for my legal rights, and seeking help from others.